Yo, it's Michael coming at you from my Zoom. I am trying way too hard in this video. I have a I have a remote to uh, start and stop recording with this and zooming in and out. I've never done this before, but I'm kind of vibing with it. It's cool. Um, what was I gonna say? Yes, in the analog video world, there is no such thing as a good or bad solution. Only creative ones. Uh, yeah, I wrote that sentence down uh, one night and uh, I realized that it's pretty accurate. Um, you know, when broken and lo-fi is the whole aesthetic of glitch art, pretty much anything goes, of course, you know, because you can always break stuff and make it look cool and glitch it out. I gotta stop zooming. Sorry. I am sorry if that's distracting. Analog video capture or digitizing it is a step you can't screw up. Um, because unless you're like recording everything exclusively to VHS, which if you're doing, I will buy your tapes. Digitizing is really important because you want it to look good on uh, YouTube, you know, don't want to get destroyed by YouTube compression. You don't want to get destroyed by Instagram compression. You just want it to look good and is as high quality as possible. And it kind of can make or break um, your project. And so I thought I would make this video to share uh, some of my humbly accumulated wisdom on the topic. Um, so I've got like three methods uh, that you can, or processes, that you can do to capture videos. One is pretty obvious. The other uh, is kind of tricky. Um, and the third is like a really underrated method uh, that I like doing and I don't see anybody really talking about. Um, so stay tuned for that. The first method is definitely really obvious if you've like been anywhere near analog stuff. And that is what's called rescanning which is just a fancy word for pointing the camera at the TV and pressing record. This is the preferred method of a lot of uh, glitch artists, and it definitely looks good because you've got those little pixels, or maybe a better word would be cells that, uh, that glow with light when the cathode ray gun, and I'm not joking, <laughs> beams the screen with electrons and gives it that classic analog look that Honestly, I don't even really remember growing up looking at um, because I think around my time when when I was old enough to have a memory, my parents definitely had LCD screens, those big, uh, like thick flat screens that were still too old to have a, an HDMI input, but that, that's besides the point. So literally the best thing to do is to, to grab a tripod and put it uh, right in front of the TV. Center it, make sure everything looks right, etc. And just hit record and you've got your video on an SD card. Okay, it's not really that simple because it really is going to depend on your type of TV and how much control you have over your camera settings. So with the TVs, I've got three or four here in my closet but the ones I prefer to capture video from the most are these two because they're flat. So if you're focusing the camera to really capture the details of those cells of light, you really need a screen that's not curving away from your camera on the sides because they're gonna be out of focus slightly and it's just gonna throw things off. Uh, and it's also harder to, uh, to, uh, to frame when you've got it uh, not exactly, um, the screen's not exactly square or rectangular. If you're zoomed into the center of the screen, you're probably fine because it's not going to be curving as much. But that brings me to another point, which is I actually like smaller screens because there's less pixels or cells rather. It sounds like it might be worse because it's less, but actually when you're uploading this kind of video to YouTube, your video is gonna get wrecked by YouTube compression and you're not gonna be able to see all of those wonderful little details 
on, on the screen of the cells. If you have too many of them in your image and your camera sensor and, and camera's compression algorithm is definitely going to struggle to render all of those, those little cells. So you either want to zoom in closer and crop your visuals so you can see those details better, or you want to record at a really high bit rate or, or shoot in 4K or something, um, or shoot in RAW if you're crazy. Um, I still don't have a good 4K camera, so rip. <laughs> I'm probably going to get one, though, uh, within the next couple months or something. The other problem you might run into is moir, or like these ugly scan lines appearing in your video, or a section of the screen being darker than the rest, or having this rainbow pattern effect. This. I'm pretty sure is due to the camera shutter and the refresh rate of the screen being out of sync with each other. There's also the fact that there's actually a lot of detail on these screens um, and, and they can get warped, especially if the screen is curving or if you have like some kind of lens distortion. Um, but honestly, I might not be the best person to, to give you an answer um, when you not if, but when you encounter this problem. Um, but just know that when I do this, I have my camcorder set to shutter priority at 1 60th of a second, and it seems to work fine when recording videos, so I don't touch it. I also try to shoot at 60 frames per second. I don't know if that helps or not. When you're taking photos, it's probably even trickier and definitely it's very hard to take a photo of a glitch that's moving around a bunch. I know that it's really hard to take a photo of a screen without using a shutter speed that's like one tenth or, or one sixth of a second, which is really slow compared to the, the speed that a screen like this refreshes at, which is one sixtieth of a second. So one workaround you can do, and if you have an analog video mixer that you're using in your signal chain, you can press the freeze or still effect on it and stop whatever glitch is going on in, in its place so you can snap a photo of it. And you can use a longer exposure time, you know, if you want. And it's not going to be any blur or any double exposure thing, unless that's something you're going for. Like I said, you know, in glitch art, anything goes. The other thing you obviously want to do is to shoot in a dark room, or as dark as you can. Unless you want some refract, re refracted, reflected light on the screen, uh, which can be a totally cool thing to do also, because in glitch art, anything goes. Speaking of, I've got to shout out Tachyons Plus, because uh, as you know, you probably know he's one of the big figures in the, the analog glitch scene and I know that he actually prefers filming and capturing off of CRT screens. He lately has been doing a lot of creative techniques where he zooms into the screen and pans across to create movement and uh, that way he's able to capture a lot of interesting details in addition to blending you know multiple shots together to create these really stimulating analog spaces and, and textures. His, uh, his latest videos have been really fun to watch because of that. Um, so yeah, obviously you need to check out his work if, um, regardless, honestly. Um, he's a big figure. Uh, I'll put his YouTube link in the description. And of course, obviously he makes his circuit bent stuff, which um, is really good, but I'm getting sidetracked. Also, sort of like what I just talked about this technique sort of like a, a technique and a half. You don't have to use a uh, tube TV to film off of. I grew up with LCD screens, those big flat screens. Those work too, because anything that has uh, an analog input, you know, whether it's RCA, composite video, or S video is going to work. And you just have to point the camera at it and uh, center it and everything, frame it, make sure it looks like you're just capturing, like the screen's not even there and, uh, and you can make it work. I've done that before. I've, I've pointed a camera at a flat screen 
and uh, and captured it. That was before I had the devices I needed for this next method, which is very tricky to do and really particular and finicky because there's a lot of different ways to do it and accomplish the same thing, all at varying levels of quality. But once you find something that uh, works for you, it can be a really good alternative to capturing um, off a CRT screen, especially if you're not going for that pixelated cell, you know, high level of detail, um, retro kind of look. And you're more like aiming for like uh, old lo-fi uh, VHS type capture thing, you know, like uh, baby tapes that your dad recorded um, back in the day, something like that. So this method that I'm about to talk about is, is definitely my preferred method, um, just because I feel like I'm able to play more with the style of, of the video um, in post. Um, and I've just, I've found a, a I think I found my aesthetic in that, um, and I found a really good workflow uh, that, that uses this process. Basically, like a lot of the more recent videos on my channel use that technique. So uh, probably the first thing, or at least the first thing I did when I you know, wanted to attempt to do, to do this the first time <laughs> is uh, you search up analog video capture device on Amazon. And you're gonna see shit like this. These little dongles with USB on one end and RCA plugs or S-Video on the other. Something like this that I'm holding up. This little, uh, let me zoom in. The brand is not really important, um, but the fact that it's got USB on the end and these, uh, these plugs at the end means that uh, it's, it's doing like this uh, proprietary capture method. The software that you will get, that you'll have to download in order to use these devices from like these really cheesy brands, it's not, let's just say, uh, let's just say they're unreliable. You don't really have much control over how it's being recorded. The, the preview window is small. Um, you can't tweak the settings like the format, the, the capture quality, bit rate. Yeah, these things are, 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 are cheap for a reason, but that's not to say that you can't use them. Um, I definitely did when I was starting with analog stuff. And, uh, and I, yeah, I'll, sh I'll show you an example of using like a thing like this. This was back when I had a Sony Handycam Hi8 tape camera where I would uh, connect the camera. And I'll actually, actually, let me grab the camera so you know what I'm talking about. Where is it? I'll find it, there you go. It was this, this uh, little Sony Handycam uh, was my first thing that I uh, did glitches and stuff with. And I would connect the RCA out of this camera into this, into my computer. And I would be able to record um, when I was in playback mode, what was on the tape of this. And I would like mash the buttons and stuff to get like all these tape glitch effects and things. Um, and the result was pretty good. I liked it. I'll put the link to the video in the description of this exact like process. But since I'm a little bit insane, I'm always chasing higher quality at diminishing returns uh, with like really experimental or particular gear combos. I get a lot of questions like, what capture card do you use? And honestly, it's changes, it's really particular, it probably deserves its own video. But I will still show you some of the devices I've tried and uh, methods that I know other artists are using to directly capture analog visuals onto their computers. So the next logical step after searching up analog capture device on Amazon is to actually look up 
analog to HDMI or RCA to HDMI, um, or better yet, S video to HDMI, uh, you will probably run into this, which is a great place to start. As you can see, this photo shows both sides of the device. And whether you're looking at stuff like this on Amazon, you always need to look at the photos and the title and the description um, and very carefully, make sure that they all match um, and make sense because uh, generally y these things are not bi-directional, meaning according to this, you cannot plug an HDMI cable coming from your laptop um, and output analog video for you to glitch. In other words, this is not a downscaler. This only works as an upscaler, meaning it's taking in analog video at 480i or 240p and upscaling it to full HD at 1080p as a digital HDMI signal, which you can then capture using a thing like this. An Elgato Camlink 4K. Okay, this is just one of them, but this is the kind of thing that Twitch gamers use to turn their cameras or DSLRs into webcams so they can show their faces while they're uh, playing games. Oh, that's funny. That's uh, almost uh, the exact same camera I'm using to film this video right now. So what you do is uh, when you have th th those pieces of gear, you open up the free to download and open source OBS studio and you set the input webcam and you can scale it, you can resize it however you want and you have a lot of control over how you want to record the video, including like format, uh, bit rate, resolution, all that stuff because this software is literally what every streamer and their mother uses when they're recording and live streaming themselves, playing games and things. The benefit of using this method, you know, in general, is that you're recording at full HD, which is a standard, obviously, and, and two, the upscaler is ideally uh, helping to improve the quality of your capture, or at least make it a little more workable um, when you're trying to edit your visuals in, a, in a, something like Premiere Pro or Final Cut. Another device I've seen being thrown around is the Blackmagic Intensity Shuttle, which is something that also connects to your computer through USB. But because it's by Blackmagic, it's probably better than those little dongle devices that you find on Amazon. So as a, there's, there's just a lot of different gear combinations for this. It's definitely something you have to be willing to experiment a lot with put some money into to buy, you know, various devices and different combinations and the cables and adapters and converters and things in order to, to find something that, that works for you. Most of the time, it's not about particular brands and um, more of the, the, the difference is made in the configuration of the types of devices you're using in, in your setup. And and if you, you know, end up doing research and, and buying this device and try it uh, and it doesn't end up working like how you thought it would uh, for your workflow, you more likely than not can get a refund if it's from Amazon. You can resell it on eBay for close to the same price. Or it might actually be better to keep it because I guarantee at least once you're going to have an aha moment um, when you're, you know, in the shower or, or falling asleep, which is what always happens to me. Um, and you're going to thank yourself that you still kept that device because now you can try to uh, do a new routing chain on the spot. I didn't even get into uh, capture cards, which like go straight into the motherboard. But that's a whole other thing that I don't know much about because I do most of everything on a laptop. You're still here? Oh, you skipped, didn't you? That's okay, I don't blame you. But if you didn't skip, congrats to you. You're probably the type of person who'd be good at this kind of stuff. You know, 
Not like one of those trendy YouTube creators that just wants that lo-fi aesthetic but doesn't actually have the patience to get their hands dirty. <sighs> okay, so method number three is sort of like the first, except you're using a projector to beam onto a wall and you have a really big canvas to film off of. Uh, it's a really nice upscaled image and you can do feedback, camera feedback, that you can't do uh, in any other way. Assuming that you're filming on a smooth, clean surface and that your projector is uh, one, bright enough and two, has a good image quality. What I mean is if it's on this website, projectorcentral.com, it probably is going to be a lot better than those uh, cheap fake ass projectors that are on Amazon and eBay uh, and that still get five star reviews from people that have probably never used a projector before. Those cheaper projectors probably don't give you the ability to keystone edges or adjust corners. In addition to basic image quality controls that you're gonna want, obviously your projectors need some kind of analog input or if it just has HDMI input for whatever reason, you can again try to use an, a separate upscaler or converter to get that signal in there. And yes, I somehow always keep forgetting to mention this. You're gonna need a time-based corrector in between your analog setup and your projector, or else you risk having signal blanking, you know, whenever you do some of those harder glitches or harder bends. Projectors and these upscalers are not like CRT TVs, they don't tolerate uh, really glitchy signals as well as, you know, these TVs do. The only potential problem you might run into is uh, you getting this rainbow effect in camera, especially if your projector has a spinning color wheel like mine does, but that can be pretty easily fixed if you, again, set your camera shutter speed to like 1 60th of a second. Also, depending on your projector, some can look pixelated if you have your image thrown really large and the projector's native resolution isn't super high, you know, like, I don't know, HD or 720p. Yeah, resolution also on these things are not super important. I've heard lower is better actually if you're doing analog, but in my experience, I've never seen that much of a difference because the one that I have is, is natively 19, 20 by 1200, uh, which is even slightly larger than HD, and the image just looks fine on it. This, this whole projector approach is something that, when I think about, I've actually been doing for a long time, uh, at least back when there was live music and there were, there were shows to do visuals for. I would just hit record on my feedback camera, which is actually this camera right here, and effectively record and digitize my analog visuals on the spot. Mm. I need a nap. Uh, Loki, this video has been uh, a, a lot of work to edit. Its timeline looks like some of my visual projects, uh, which speaking of, um, to shout out myself, which I can do because this is my YouTube video. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter uh, because that's where I post my art projects and updates about other things. And uh, lastly, sincerely, thank you for watching this video. Uh, yeah, it's it sincerely it helps a lot. I'm glad that you're here, especially if you watched you know, through this whole thing, I'm right there with you because I had to edit this thing and <laughs> write down what I was going to say. So yeah, uh, thank you again and uh, be safe out there. Be creative and uh, yeah, peace out.